Uh, guys and girls, thank you for joining me. We've got a special guest on. We've got Nathan Jarman, uh, ex Barnsley player. Uh, going to interview him and see, you know, his time at Barnsley, what he's doing now, kind of thing. So, Nathan, appreciate for joining me, mate. No, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Not, not a problem. Um, so, yeah, I think, you know, it's going to be the same questions like what everybody normally asks you. Did you always want to be a footballer, Nathan, when you were when you were growing up? Uh, yeah, um, definitely. From uh, as as long as I can remember, really. Um, always played and, uh, and yeah, made my way to, uh, got into Barnsley's Academy when I was 12. And yeah, that was it. So, yeah, I always wanted to be a footballer. Would it um had been a football trying to get noticed into Bound Academy would there be a lot of competition when you were uh, in Academy? Um I I didn't get scouted um until I was I think it was my school teacher. Uh, someone at school knew uh, a guy called Morris Firth. Um who was a scout at Barnsley and he's passed on my details kind of thing. Mm. Um and I got invited down. Um yeah, and those I'm trying to remember the names of some of the blokes in I remember Dave Hancock, um yeah, who was in the academy. Um and I remember Bunny, Barry Wagstaff. These ones are like later on. Uh, they mm. weren't my coaches to start with. Um and I mean the one who stands out is uh is called Andy Rhodes. Do you remember Andy Rhodes? Andy Rhodes, yeah, yeah. 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 So yeah. um he's well his lad's still a still a you know. Of, yeah, the player in Jordan Road is a, Jordan, a real good yeah. career. Um, yeah. Made some real good money in that, and um, he's a yeah. He was the one that stood out. He was like, he's who I try and because now I'm a, a kids football coach with kids. Mm. He's who I who I still try and emulate, and he was always real loud and larger than life, and um, he had a real positive impact on me. So yeah, I, I enjoyed that one. That that's just interesting, back. Because I was going to say, uh, when obviously when you're a kid and that, like, who were the influence on helping you in your career at Barnsley? What biggest influence at, at Barnsley? What could you advise? Um, Barnsley coming through. Um, I had, uh, I think it was, I think his name was Steve Gate. There was Jordan Gates who who played on our mm. team. His dad, uh, and I think it was Steve. Um, and I I really liked him. Um, Andy Rhodes, as I've said, uh, and then yeah. as I started to get up, it was um, I was making more appearances. When I from like being 14, 15, 16, I was playing for the under 18, uh, under 19s first, and then um, yeah, it was under 19s. It was. Yeah. Uh, it's changed now, um, and I think it was. Bar- I think Barry Wagstaff was there, and um, Bunny, like I said, uh, but then the one who I, I really had a a lot of time for um and I still speak to well I, I would speak to him if uh you know if chance arose uh and I speak to his lad uh, a guy called Mick Tarney who's still involved with the academy I think yeah um, yeah but he, he had like he probably st- still tells the same stories now but um his life he, he was a, a paratrooper um a policeman a football coach, he'd, he'd done like so much Gosh. physio, um, he'd done so much, he just had like loads of tales to tell and stuff. Um, and I, I really, yeah, um, uh, really like gravitated towards him and, and got on really well with him coming through. So, well, I've just made some notes because, uh, it, you made your debut against Oldham in 2004. Uh, do, yeah, do, do, you, do you remember it well? Yeah, what it like did. game with, um, with this team like what it what it uh, butterflies kind of thing. Uh, well, I'd been in. You know what? I'd been involved with the first team from from school. Um, I'd been like training and and what have you. I, I used to go in for him. Uh, my last year of school, the, there was a lad who played in uh, in the same year group as me called Kyle Travis, uh, another mm. striker. Um, and we'd go in and train with the older lads, uh, and then be involved with the first team, just training, nothing heavy um and then from i signed when i signed my scholarship and moved into digs and stuff mm. uh i was good john Torderson was manager um oh, and I moved, yeah, well, yeah. yeah i was training straight for him uh leaving school and i was straight in with the first team and it was a bit of an eye-opener but i i just wanted to do it um and i remember my first pre-season game or that first pre-season game of that season was against Bradford and it was down on the 
it's the 18s pitch now, but we used to call it the under 19s pitch. Um, mm. The one that's down the hill uh, and yeah. it's got like a few seats by the side of it. Um, and uh, David Weatherall, and I'm a Leeds fan, David mm. Weatherall was playing. So I was like a, a little bit awestruck thinking, mm. what am I doing here? And anyway, mm. he ended up kicking um, the proverbial seven bells out of me. <laughs> and, uh, and, <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> yeah, it didn't, it didn't go, yeah, didn't, go uh, didn't go according to plan, but... Um, yeah, so from being 16, I was in and around it. And eventually I made my debut at um, eight, 18, I think, um, away at Oldham. And it, mm. <laughs> we was we was winning 2-1 when I came on and we ended up losing 3-2, so it wasn't brilliant. <laughs> well, you remembered it well, but... <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Well, uh, when you were in first team, um, obviously, you know, it's a different experience kind of thing. Do you, did you have certain people you hung about with or uh, all you shared rooms with kind of thing or were it anybody my, really? Um, my first my first time rooming away was, uh, I was rooming with Nicky Rowe. Um, mm. It was a young, he was a year older than me, um, but he was, he had made a few appearances and he'd been with the first team um, for a while. And we, um, we I think it was away at QPR. Um, early on in the season, we'd gone away and I, I'd ended up being uh, as you do, I was you know the youngest one there and seventeenth man. Um, mm. But the my memory from the game is uh, was sat I'm sat behind the dugout and Nicky was as well. Um, and I don't know if you remember, but there's this guy called Noel Blake and he's a, a real big like yeah, unit of a unit. man. Yeah, he is, yeah. Um, a big guy. Anyway, he's, he stood up to start berating someone, start shouting at someone. <laughs> And the seats at QPR then they flip back up. So when you sit, when you like stand up, the seat flips up. Yeah. Anyway, he stood up. He started shouting and he's bellowing at somebody, and then he's gone to sit back down and his seats flipped up and he's like he's fallen on his on his backside. <laughs> so I've started laughing and he's like, "What?" And he looked. And I'm like, oh, my God. So um, so yeah, <laughs> I don't know what the score was in that game. But I what the ball, but that was the first time that I'd been away with the first team. A memorable, memorable. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what did you play under Andy Ritchie and Ricky Alden as well? Yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah. uh, um, I, I, I think they, I, I remember it around about two thousand six. I think it was something like that when it when when they were there, Andy yeah. Ritchie and Ricky Alden. What what were they like? Because I when I was you know been going to watch Barnsley for donkeys years, like and uh, whenever I yeah. saw Ricky Alden, they were always like sent to be a bit of a character, Ricky Alden, yeah, you know, was. proper one at lads, you know. There's um. <laughs> There's some really, really uh, funny stories. I don't, I don't know. What, I don't know what this, this audience can cope with, but um, there's, uh, there's some really, really bad stuff. Yeah, I, you'd have to speak to Tony, um, Dale Tong. Oh yeah, Dale. Yeah. Um, <laughs> got him in my head. Some really, some really bad stuff. Uh, I remember going in, um, and people have like one training session. I, am, I allowed, am I allowed to say it? Am I going to get? Yeah, I don't, I don't sure, want yeah. to get told off for this. No, um, no, 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 of course you're not. I think, as the story goes, I think <laughs> he might say different. It's a long time ago. I think Rick Holden did a shit in someone's <laughs> wash bag. <laughs> <laughs> I think <laughs> if my memory says right, it was it was either that or or someone had done it to him in his wash bag. Um, and then anyway, there was there was loads of stuff back and forth like that, and it was it was brilliant. And I was only a you know a young lad coming through, and yeah, I was thinking, yeah. what is going on here? <laughs> um, and we like the young lads that were just trying to make the breakthrough. Um, we didn't we we called it the reserve room, so. The, the main first team dressing room was up the corridor and it was where all the established first team pros go mm. and we was in the reserve room. So I remember one day there was, you know, a, a big kerfuffle full and, and people are saying, nah, he's gone too far this time, he's gone too far and walked into the first team dressing room and it's filled up both baths. So as you go in, you turn into the shower and there's two baths at, at the end yeah. and he's filled up two baths and he's put everybody's clothes, oh, <laughs> he called and put everyone's clothes and stuff in the bath. <laughs> so he was a, he was a character and, um, I never seen him play, but in training and stuff, he could um, he could still like take a man on and whip it in. Mm. And I don't know how old he was at the time, so I, I imagine he was he was a good player. He used to get letters and stuff. I do remember that. Um, he'd get fan mail still from 
maybe Oldham fans. I think it was Oldham he was there. Yeah, we're at Oldham, a yeah. Cult, a cult yeah. hero. At. He'd get, he'd get um, fan mail and letters saying, Rick, hope you're well and um, mm. just want to say thank you for all the years of, of service that like, you gave us as fans. And I was like, how do people like still writing letters 15 years or 10 years later? Weird, but he must have had that much of an impression on people um, and been that good of player. Yeah, I think he lives in the Isle of Man now. Really? All right. I know I, that. I think so. I know when uh, I, I remember obviously watching and stuff like that. Whenever you watched it, it always seemed to be on pitch for great uh, bonding and uh, team camaraderie and it was like a togetherness. And I think Andy Ritchie, because obviously Andy Ritchie uh, played all of them as well, them still yeah. seem to bounce off of one another and really, really get on. You know, and, and yeah. I thought the work rate from that, it was like it, it like went onto the pitch and you could see it on pitch, it was like a, an happiness, a togetherness, and it was what well, we've just said there, pranks and that, but it's like a good bonding exercise as well, isn't it? You know what I mean? It's yeah, it's one yeah. of them. Um, um so, it, it was full of that. It was yeah, it was full of that to be fair. When uh who's idea way for you to go out on loan then because you, you played a few games. Um, I think I'd gone to work up in Grimsby. I know you'd had a, a, some good spells at Grimsby as well. Um, yeah. Were it that, were it the club's idea to say you need to get some more game time, or you know, um, did they tell you, what, or were it a discussion with you? Uh, I, I had the option. Workshop one. Um, I'm trying to remember. Workshop. I went to. Did I, go, I think I went to them first. Um, and went there, and on my on my debut for him, they were they was in the Conference North, which was, I think it's we was in League One, Barnsley were in mm-hmm. League One, and they were Conference North, so it was like three leagues below. Um, but I scored an over a kick on my debut, um, mm-hmm. and in that same on the same day, um, I, I won a penalty and I, I got the penalty and was winning winning two one, and we had a minute to go, um, and I dinked it, you know, like a penenka. Yeah, yeah. So I was. I can't remember how old I was it. If I was eighteen or nineteen or whatever. Um, anyway, I've I've dinked it down the middle, thinking Billy Big mm. looks. Um, and the keeper stood there and he's, he's just literally just caught got it. it. Um, and I was like, oh no. Anyway, <laughs> he's kicked it out. They've gone up the other end against Barrow. It was, and um, and they've hit the crossbar. And I was thinking, oh my god, we I could have just cost oh, us the game and taken the third. Yeah. Um. Anyway, so it it went well. well I say it went well at workshop. We um we. I think I played 13 and, and scored a few, uh, but I scored a, a couple of really nice goals, um, but then ended up coming back. And then the next, I don't know if I went to Bury after that or before, I can't remember, but I went on loan to Bury, um, got sent off on my debut. Which really? Was one, yeah, one <laughs> ideal. Um, Chris, Chris Casper was manager, um, and he, he took me in, uh, brought me in. Um, and what I remember from that day was there's a guy I, you might remember him called Alan Smart. Do you remember striker? Yeah, Alan Smart. Smart. Yeah. So Smart is um, having a bit of a bit of an argument with Chris Casper, whatever. Uh, I got sent off in the 44th minute as well, so it was like right before half time. So everyone, yeah. mar- not it wasn't mad. I, I literally I took a corner. It got headed back out, and it's in between me and um, uh, a, a big winger called Josh Lowe. Anyway, so I, he's like six foot four or something, and I'm only, what, five ten. I was thinking he's going to try and smash me here. So anyway, yeah. I've jumped into the tackle and he he didn't. So it looked um, uh, looked uh. worse. And uh, yeah, got straight red. Anyway, so we've gone into the dressing room. Um, you know the, the water bottle? So after the warm-up, they're empty. Lads have drunk them and that. But someone had gone in, uh, one of the staff there at Berry, and they've filled all the water bottles up. <laughs> So there's a Lucas Aid like stand full of twelve bottles, but they're all full. So anyway, Chris Casper's come in. I'm already, I'm already sat there with my head down, and he's gone to volley these bottles and he's oh, tried God. booting it, and he's really <laughs> broke his foot. They, like they literally didn't move. So he's, yeah, he's booted them, and uh, and they didn't move at all. So I'm like, oh uh-huh. my God, don't laugh, don't laugh, don't laugh. Yeah. So yeah, um, it didn't go well there either. <laughs> Great oh. stories. I love hearing yeah. these stories and other fans will as well. Uh, Grimsby Town, I think it's fair to say you had some uh, good success, uh, success at Grimsby Town as well. You made a, quite a few appearances, didn't you? Yeah, that was um, that was my yeah, my best spell in the in the football league. Um, mm. I went there. Uh, Simon Davy was at 
Barnsley. Yeah. Uh, Barnsley manager. And he'd managed, on the last day, we'd managed to stay up uh, in the championship. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the next day or two days later or whatever, he's called us in. And I was, I'd always been like the the best in my the best in my age group or whatever and um I just it hit me for six like I did didn't expect him to say look you've he, he just said you've basically stagnated um plateaued you've not really improved wow. um we think it's best if you if you leave so I've gone into it thinking oh, I'm going to get another contract here and is yeah it's going to say I bet you thought that yeah 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 um so it won't and I don't know I think I played in the cup games that year um, I didn't make an appearance in the in the championship, but I played in like the league cup and an FA yeah. cup or whatever. Um, been in and around it, but uh, we'd stayed up, so he's probably going to get a little bit more money and, and wanted better players. Um, but my old academy manager was uh, Stuart Watkiss. Oh yeah. So yeah, Stuart tried signing me. He was manager at um, Kidderminster, and I think I don't know if it was Simon Davy or Andy Ritchie wouldn't let me go. He tried signing me anyway. He rang me and um, and he just said, uh, "Look, I can I can't promise you anything." He said, "We've already got four strikers." He said, "But if you come in and impress, um, there'll be something there for you at Grimsby." Mm. And I was like, "Right, okay." I've just I was, I don't know I was twenty I think I've just um, <laughs> just got a mortgage in Barnsley. <clears throat> Excuse me oh, in uh, right. in Cuddeth. Um Anyway, so he said, "Yeah, do this. Uh, come over." So I went and um and I put a bit of weight on in the summer. Um and I think I turned up about sixteen stone and I, I should have been about twelve and a half. Um and he said, What have you done? And I said <laughs> I said nothing. He went, Well, I can fucking see that. <laughs> see that. <laughs> <laughs> so I was um I was like, right. So for the first maybe two months I was I was training and I I, I was still sharp not sharp enough, but I was still sharp. Um, my first touch was, you know, it still is good now. Um, but I just couldn't keep up and I, I couldn't keep going. So I was training in the morning with the lads and then I was uh, running in the afternoon. So I was mm. running around the streets of Cleethorpes and Grimsby and the training ground or whatever. I got myself really, got myself really fit with the help of Stu. And uh, and we call it, it was affectionately known as um, Grimsby Town Fat Club. Um <laughs> And my uh, my assistant manager now, Northy, um, he was in it with me, Danny North. Uh, right. He had a decent career as well. Um, but yeah, we both yeah just used to run with Stu and run uh, up and down Cleethorpes and <laughs> worked out well. I, I signed um, a trial contract with like basically uh, expenses um, for a couple of weeks and did all right. And then he I got a a month to month contract. Um, and then, as I started to get fitter and play well, um, I signed a, a three-year, co- uh, a three-month three contract to take me to January, mm. and then a six-month contract to the end of the season. And before that one was up, I'd signed a, another two and a half-year contract or something like that. So I ended up staying for would have been four years, but in my last year, um, managed to fall out with uh, somebody and um, and ended up leaving a year early. So that is okay. what it is, and I really enjoyed it, at Grimsby. It's, I still like speak to quite a few of the people down there now and played in, um, I'm hesitant to say it, it's called the Legends game, but basically ex players. Um, All right, yeah. Played it in a charity game. Um, mm-hmm. So played in that in the summer and um, and it was really good, good fun. Nice for my my little lad um, to see me playing on there on my spot. Yeah. Uh, so after, after Greensby, like I said, it, it prematurely ended. Let's let's put, like, leave it like that. So uh, yeah, I think that's what I'd say. Yeah, when when it uh, when it finished at, at Grimsby, were you still want to obviously carry on playing football, or what, were you were you like started to go thinking about coaching later on in career? Were you taking any coaching badges in the meantime or anything like that? Um, <clears throat> excuse me. No, um, <clears throat> I didn't do um, I didn't do my the only ones I've done are the ones that I did as a YT. Um, mm. Your scholarship, your level two. I did it with a, a guy called Andy Barlow, who um, who quite he was an Oldham player as well. I think um, comes through, and you do. Everyone does it as a scholar. Yeah. Um, but no, when I when I left Grimsby, um, I had a, a fair few offers. Uh, I'm trying to think who I spoke to, I spoke to a few clubs, 
Um, one, I knew I wanted to stay fairly, well, I say local. I, I ended up playing for a team miles away, but mm. it was money that I, I couldn't really turn. I didn't understand that there was, I couldn't fathom that there was more money or people were offering me more money to play non-league two nights a week um, really? than what Grimsby was offering me. Yeah, and it's it's mm-hmm. still that way now. And I don't mm. I don't know whether people realise how much money's in like that's weird, league. that isn't it? When you've just said yeah. that, that's weird. That, that. it's great. Yeah. Like, if I told you, you, you wouldn't believe it. There's, there's people in the conference north and there, even the, the league below, the northern Premier League, getting six, mm. seven hundred pounds a week. And you just think, how on earth is that sustainable? Well, it's not sustainable yeah. because they can't do it, but we can't, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, but I went to Corby and after not enjoying my last year at Grimsby. Um, went to Corby under a guy called Graham Drury um, who you might not have heard of but he's manager at Stamford now and they're doing mm. really well um, and I, I really really enjoyed it like, I didn't ever fall out of love with football but I, I really enjoyed it again um, mm. ended up playing uh, <laughs> another game I got sent off there's a bit of a, a bit of a team <laughs> but <laughs> I, uh, we got to the first round or the second round of the FA Cup um, from the Conference North team, that's, you know, it's a, a good run. Yeah, it's, it's a good um, name. Yeah, we played um, Luton away and the ball's gone in their dugout. Um, I've run in, I've ran in there to retrieve it. Hmm. One of them's kicked the ball away, so I've like, give him a little nudge. But then the assistant manager was a, a massive unit called Gary Brabin. don't know if you remember him. He was a big like... Brabin. Naming's Bell Brabin, yeah. yeah. Um, anyway... But everyone after I got so many messages and texts after saying, What are you doing? Why are you messing with him? He's massive. <laughs> and I was like, I didn't I didn't even realise, but and he's ended up, he's he's like gripped me up round my neck. So I've um I've tried I've tried hitting him and I've I've missed with my right hand, but then with my left hand I've caught him and I've hit him on his chin. Anyway, he's let go of me. Um but it's all kicked off, everyone's scrapping. Mm. And I, I got a red card and he got a red card, but he was assistant manager. It didn't matter to them. Yeah. Um, I ended up losing 4-2. Um, that's my, <laughs> not my best memory of, of uh, Corby, but <laughs> I, we did, like we had a good team and we, we were doing well. Um, from Corby, uh, I think it was like February time, a little bit what happens in non-league, but if you're not going to get promoted or there's no chance of promotion, um, mm. people start, not that they never like didn't pay me money, but they started like making noises that you can leave if you want yeah. it. Alfreton were um were top of the league um and offered offered money to buy me out of my contract, offered money to Corby to buy me. Mm. It was that year, it was 2010, and we had loads and loads of snow. Games were getting called off all over the place. Um, well, it was 2011, but it was like 2010 2011 season, yeah. So Alfred and had about nine games to catch up, um, something stupid. But there was already six or seven points clear, so they knew they were going to win the league, and it was a no-brainer. So I went to Alfred and, um, and they had some really good pros there as well, um, and ended up getting promoted with Alfred and, and and stayed there for a year. So yeah, not too bad, not too bad. No, uh, right. <laughs> <laughs> so with uh, with coaching. Uh, yeah. What is something you always wanted to do? What you know, did you ever think about or I don't know if any opportunities came up to come back to Barnsley in any coach you for academy side or were you happy and content where you're living now just to carry on in, in that area kind of thing? Um I, I, well if it if the opportunity I mean the way I look at it now, um I'm manager at a team called Barton, which is hmm. about 20 minutes, maybe 25 minutes from Scunthorpe, where I live, um, the other way, towards Hull. And um, I'm manager there, and I'm really enjoying it. Uh, we're, we're doing quite well. We've had the first, like my first year, I'm only 35, it's my first year doing it. Nice. Um, coaching as a coach has never been, I say never been on my radar. I do it for a job, but I do it for children like, uh, we have kicked it's a football franchise where right. we coach children like age two up to 11 um coaching professionally i'm not saying it's not part of my plans but i'd i see myself as a manager rather than a coach yeah. i'd rather be the the figurehead and the person that um you know that either 
good things or good results come from or bad results, then it's my fault. It's, yeah. I'd rather be the person that's my head's on the chopping block kind of thing. Mm. Um, so if if I ever did well enough, um, which I, you know, I, I want to, and I, mm. I, I'm ambitious, I, I want to manage full time and I want to manage, um, you know, in the league eventually. Um, mm. If it ever came up, I'd, uh, I'd jump at the chance, but I, it's a fair way off just yet. Yeah, I'm, well, I mean, like you say, you're 35, you're young enough and you're enjoying, like you said, with kids, uh, with kids in uh, what you're doing at minute and yeah. uh, you've got aspirations to be a manager. So there's, there's still plenty of time here. And I think uh, anybody watching will understand that because if, if you're enjoying like football and you're doing what you're doing and then who knows in a couple of years' time, five years' time, whatever, you, you might get that lucky break and it's like, you know what? And, it, and I suppose it's like hotels if you're a player going going to a club it's got to feel right for you and all. Uh yeah, so there's no point yeah. just taking first opportunities. But you've got if it don't feel right for you, you it's it's gonna be an awkward fit in it kind of thing for you. Yeah. Um I I don't know. I've I've looked at it um it it doesn't fall on like I said, it don't fall on my radar wanting to be a coach. Um with the way things are with kicks and, and running our own our own business, me and my wife, um it's it gives me a work-life balance, what I can, um, what I really enjoy. Uh, mm. You know, I, I do the school run. Um, I'm not out. It's not a nine to five where I'm out of the house completely. Yeah. I, I really enjoy it. Um, if the opportunity ever came for me to get into full-time football, though, I would just hire a, a manager to run kicks and um, and I'd just jump at it to uh, mm. jump at the opportunity to, to play football because, uh, to to be involved in football full time because that's just I, it's all I've ever known and all I've ever done. So I've never had a proper job like everyone else. So I just want to I just want to carry on football as long as I can. <laughs> so everybody, what's watching this? If you're a footballer, it's not a proper job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I appreciate it's it. True. I appreciate it, Nathan. I really do. And everybody, what's watching or what you do, please leave a like and subscribe. Uh, Nathan's uh, been top man. I know you've been busy with uh, all your your lifestyle and your work and that, but yeah, I do appreciate you taking time out, Nathan. Really appreciate it, mate. No, thank you for having me. I appreciate it, top man. Yeah. Not a problem. Not a problem. Cheers. Thanks. Cheers, mate.